Okay, we'll get started with the, the two remote talks by Robert McClay in Austin. So, what time is it, Robert in Austin? It's 9.30. Oh, okay, it's not too early, but okay. Um, so, Robert McClay is the, is the developer of LMOD for God knows how long, he'll mention it, and also the main developer of Exalt, which is another uh, tool he has been working on for quite a while at Tech. And he'll give us an update on both of them. Thank you very much, Robert. Barcelona. features, a little bit of the history, some advanced topic, and, and some things that I've been thinking about. Okay, what's LMOD? Well, LMOD reads module files, and the module files can be written in either TCL or Lua. Um, LMOD supports what I call the one name rule, um, which means that you can only have one GCC, or you can't have, you can't have two versions of GCC loaded at the same time. Um, it supports a software hierarchy, although this, this is not required. Um, it's got a thing um, known as a spider cache, which makes a uh, module avail very fast. It has a tool, it, it, you can have properties. So you can say a module is good for GPUs or that dead, uh, you know, this started when we, when we got um, the Xeon Phi's or the mics. Um, and, but you can put things like, uh, this is experimental or testing or obsolete or whatever you'd like, um, semantic versioning. So 5.6 is older than 5.10. It's got what I call the family support. So you can say this is part of a family. So, um, you can't load the Intel compiler and the PGI compiler or, uh, something like that. And you can have, um, or you can only have one MPI stack loaded at a time. Now, there are ways, there are times where people need to load multiple compilers. Certainly the Intel compiler sort of underneath loads the GCC compiler and that works fine. But, um, and for people who need to have two compilers loaded, there's a way around it. You can also track what modules are loaded. So you can, uh, every time there's a module load, it can get recorded to syslog, which then can be loaded to a database or a process whenever you like. Uh, there's many other features. There's ML, there's collections, there's hooks, extended defaults, the nag message. All of them I, I have found to be useful in various ways. A little history. Um, when I started out, um, I only thought that you should need a name and a version. Um, LMOD 5 came out. And I allowed you to have a category, a name, and a version. You can have as many categories and subcategories as you like. It's only uh, typing and nomenclature. And in LMOD 7, which came out a couple of years ago, you can now support both. Um, you can have name and a directory, which is a version and a version file. So the name of the, the Intel, so this compiler might be the Intel MPI, that's the name of the module and its version is 64 slash 1801. Um, some of you know Carl Schultz and he came to me and asked, could we support something like um, the ability to have depend, dependent modules? So let's say that X and Y depends on A. So if you, if you, have both X and Y say depends on A, then when you purge and load X and unload X, it will it will load at A and then unload A. If you do a module purge and load X and Y and then unload X, you keep A. You do a module purge, you load X and Y, unload X and Y, then it unloads A. But if the user loads A, X and Y, it keeps A. 
Um, we have a group of modules, mainly bio containers that are, there's like 8,000 of them and we don't want to pollute module avail. So we, you can dynamically load and change the cache so that when you do module avail no, under normal circumstances, you don't see all those 8,000 modules. But if you load a particular module, then you can dynamically increase the cache and increase what module avail and module spider says. And for, for our users who many are not interested in bio containers, this is a convenience, but obviously our normal users can't spider bow tie if that's one of the containers, but you can opt in. It's obviously not required, but it's an optional feature. And the way you do it is you have a uh, module file, which adds to the module RC. And then when the mode is spider, it knows to find, you know, uh, it extends the module path only when you're in not in spider mode. So that way, when uh, the spider cache is being built every night, it doesn't um, build that spider cache with it in there. And then there's a way to um, add this, uh, add the, this to script file to say where the cache file lives. So um, about a year ago, I guess, I decided to inc you know, leave uh, LMOD 8 or even lead LMOD 7 and, and increase the, the major version number to 8. And it has some extended, it has some new features. Um, there's not, it's not the big change that going from LMOD 6 to LMOD 7 is. Um, it just has a, new, a few new features. So extended default, I'll explain what that means. The TCL interpreter is now optionally embedded with LMOD to get speed. Um, there's a new function uh, which Kenneth and Ward helped me put together called extensions and a better way, a, a small change to handle better, um, handle special modules. So uh, long version numbers are a pain. Um, I have no idea why the Intel, com Intel names their files 1804 or 1904 or whatever, because they've never in five years have they had a something in the second place um, and they always get to the new, you know, new version. But anyway, so having to type all that extra stuff got to be annoying. So with extended default, you can say uh, module load 18 and it will figure out what the highest, what the highest numerical version is or the mark default. So it's useful if you've got 18 as the default and you want to load 17, but don't remember what the latest is. And so you can find, um, you, you can make it easier to find what the latest version is. Um, LMOD now embeds the uh, TCL interpreter. Um, this speeds up a module avail and loads when there are many dot version files or dot module RC files. However, it's still faster to use um, module RC dot Lua files over the TCL version of this, just because I still have to, I don't have the expense of doing a system call, firing off the interpreter and then getting it all back. But I still have to run the interpreter inside of LMOD to generate. So there's a, there's a file called TCL to Lua, which translates TCL uh, module files into some into a Lua file, which then can be interpreted, and that takes time, and it's it's faster to use um, the module RC file Lua over the TCL version. <sighs> Extensions. So, uh, since this is an easy build community, it's easy to talk about this. Um, the point is that Python and R and other tools have packages that are or software packages that are part of say the Python. So a Python module might build NumPy, SciPy and other, you know, innumerable things. And R typically has 300 packages. And so it can be hard for users to find um, what is available. Sure, they can, they can load the Python and then find out 
if they know where to look, they can find out where, that this one has a particular version of NumPy or SciPy. But um, so LMOD, I added this feature called extensions, which means that you can say in a Python module that it provides the NumPy and SciPy and whatever else. Um, and then, let's see, do I say, yes. So users can use Spider to find these extensions. Users can use um, uh, Avail to list the extensions and base names. And if I have time, I'll show you some examples or Kenneth can show some examples of this. Um, but the basic idea is that you can do Spider NumPy and it will tell you that it's avail this NumPy version is available from this version of Python and, <clears throat> and you can do avail on it and it will tell you that it's available. If you try to load it, it will tell you to find Spider to go actually uh, load it. One of the things that I made clear when we, Kenneth and I were talking about this was you, a user could not do module load NumPy and have it work because what is it, which Python should it load? And when, if a user wants to unload NumPy, should it unload Python or not? So it was just much easier to tell users that they have to load and unload a particular version of Python or R or whatever they need. One, one small remark here, Robert, or maybe for the, the easy build people here in the room. Easy build will add the extensions function by default to the Python module, for example, or the R module. It's there if you look at the module file, at least if you use a sufficiently recent easy build version, the extension statement is there and there's a LMOD version check around it. So it's only actually used when your LMOD version is recent enough. So if you update LMOD, I don't know, 8.1 or 8.2, Robert, I don't know by heart, yeah, and you run module avail, you'll suddenly see all these ex ex extensions pop up, like all these R packages, all these Python libraries will be mentioned in the output of module avail in a separate section. Yes, and the separate section only lists NumPy, not NumPy and all the versions, just because I didn't want to be overwhelmed with all the different versions of NumPy that you might actually see. And I don't want users to think they can load them directly, you know, because module avail typically meant you can load something um, and, um, and this is weird. So it's, they're in a different color, they're whatever. They're, they're, it's hopefully um, it will be, significantly different enough that, but users will be guided. So if they try and load, do num, you know, module load NumPy and there's no separate NumPy module, they'll say, hey, this isn't available. It might be an extension, do module spider, do module spider NumPy. Um, oh, and um, to get it to work right, you need a, uh, particular 8.2 something or other, but so I've just released 8.3, so I would recommend people upgrade to that. Um, so to, sw uh, to switch to special modules, we have modules that have special access required. And the way we, norm the way we typically do that is we have a special group, the VASP or MATLAB or um, Abacus uh, user group. So a user, so a user has their own group, and then they, if they if they pass the test, they get added to a particular group, uh, which says they have access to. They can uh, run that module. And then what we want to do is we we don't hide modules. Instead, we make them so they don't, they don't load correctly if you're not a member of this group. And to make this simpler, I wanted to have a way to um, make this more noticeable to the user. So um, there's a there's code called user in group. So if you're in the X, G dash XYZ group, then you have access, access to the ACME XYZ binary. But if you're not a member of the group, you get a banner, um, which is the width of the screen and you don't have access to this, please do whatever. And um, the banner command is new. 
And also you can do uh, an exit. So you get a very clean um, exit rather than seeing, it doesn't load the module. Um, okay. So um, LMOD can optionally track usage. I'd like to make it easier. I'm still thinking about this. I'd like to make it easier to limit the amount of time we track. Uh, um, right now I write to a database and it's for the life of the machine. And I'd like to reduce that to much shorter because I typically don't care what anybody did two years ago. I really want to know in the past year. I'd like to get LMOD to support the uh, break feature, the break function. Um, which is a bit weird, but uh, most of the support's there in LMOD 7. I just haven't had a chance to do it. There's um, support for, I'm, I'm looking to add support for uh, TMOD 4's advanced modules, special specifications, so you can do module load at 2.4 to 2.8, and it will um, be, uh, it will try and load the best version, whatever that means between versions 2.4 and 2.8. And there's a hack so that you can say, I want anything less than, like for Python, you might want the most recent version of Python that's not Python 3. So there would be a way to do that. And I'm also looking to, um, I was hoping to do this in January, but obviously that this, this is going away and I'm going skiing next month. So probably in March, I'm going to try and set up a monthly discussion group and people will be able to do things, do, um, the similar that Kenneth does to have the bi-weekly meetings. I don't think I have that much interest. So I'm going to try, I'll start once a month and see how that goes. Um, I'm happy to say that LMOD is taking over the world. Um, this is, um, uh, Kenneth showed me that you can use read the docs to track usage. So this allows me for in the past year, these are all the places in the world where somebody has access, some, some country, someone in that country has accessed um, the Elmod documentation. So we're doing, I'm doing pretty well. I don't have all of Africa. I don't quite have all of South America, but um, I don't have Mongolia. And here's the same thing, which is probably a more reasonable thing. You can see that uh, Elmod re readers of Elmod documentation are the US, and in Europe and Australia, but you know, it's doing all right. So in case uh, anybody hasn't found it, um, Elmod, the latest version of Elmod can be found at uh, GitHub on the TAC Elmod Git site. There's a stable version at SourceForge and the latest documentation or the documentation is at Elmod Read the Docs. And I'll take questions. Any questions for Robert on Elmont? Going once, going twice. When when will you be finished with Elmont, Robert? Uh, when I'm six feet under, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a, there's an interesting question that's come up, and in, um, I know Damien's asked this question. Um, that collections. So collections are a nice feature where you can say, I want these modules to be my default or these modules, when I say module, you know, uh, what is it? Restore collection, um, you know, you get this list of modules and this is great. But the problem is that LMOD will sometimes say, hey, your collection is broken. And it's because somebody underneath has changed what you load. For example, we have a TAC module, which is used to say Python 2. And uh, this year we're switching that to Python 3 and everybody's collection is gonna be broken. And because uh, the way the loads work. And I've been trying to find a way to, um, not have that message come out, but there for complicated reasons, I don't think I can do so because my rule is that the collection ought to do, ought to get the same result as if the user did what they did before by hand. And 
Um, and that's why I violate uh, collection. So anybody who wants to discuss this with me in March, we can do that. There's, a, there's an option or configuration option in Elmod though to when you do a module save to save the collection that it pins all the versions at that moment, moment in time to make yes, the that's collection true. reproducible. That's true. But, but if somebody changes what, you know, go, switches from Python 2 to Python 3, uh, it will break. If you have been version set because... Well, but see the... No, because... Well, if yeah. you have a meta module which loads Python, used to load Python 2 and now it loads Python 3, you will get an error. Okay, that's clear. Yeah. Um, the reason, the, the way I, you know, so if a load statement, if a load statement changes or the, um, a prepend or append to the module path changes, that's detected. And that's when I, um, that's when I say the collection is invalid. So we'll have to talk about that some more. And I'm probably going to have to explain why I have to do it, which is complicated. It's probably going to require a couple pages of documentation to describe it. But anyway, that's what I'm working. Those are the things I'm working on. All right, let's switch to Elmod. I mean, to Exalt.